Good morning, Canisius High School community. It is Andy DL, your Vice President for Institutional Advancement, back with another episode of Conversations with Canisius, our regular web series where we check in with our alums all over the United States and see what they've been up to since their time here at 1180 Delaware. I am joined today by two very special guests, uh, Mr. Brad and Mr. Brian Stam from the classes of 1987 and 1990, respectively. Uh, they are the owners of the Stam Law Firm here locally in Buffalo, one of the most famous law firms in the area. Gentlemen, how are you today? Great, Andy. Great, Andy. Thanks uh, Thanks for letting us be here. Absolutely. You know, we've, never, we've never interviewed uh, two brothers at the same time before, so this will be uh, a maiden voyage for us, but I'm sure uh, a successful one. So, Brad, let's just, just really quickly, Brad, tell us a little bit about Stam Law Firm, its history, and, and the kind of work you guys special, specialize in. Sure, Andy, of course. So, uh, my dad started the firm probably about 50 years ago, I would say. Um, and my brother and I came into the practice after law school. We both went away to law school. We were out of state. So uh, I was in Connecticut. My brother was in Massachusetts. And uh, my father, I remember him asking me, and Brian probably has his own story, but uh, he called me up and said, hey, my uh, associate's leaving. I really need you back in the business. Can you help? And I was working in Albany for the state legislature at the time. And it was a very tough decision, but I wanted to come home, be part of the family business, and and here we are today. And my brother and I have, have grown this business, very proud of it. Uh, the kind of work we love doing, uh, estate planning is one of our biggest departments. Everything from helping people after you know the families after someone passes, as well as helping them plan, protect their assets. That's become a huge thing, asset protection. Uh, we do a lot of personal injury work. We do a lot of corporate work. So a lot of it goes hand in hand, quite honestly, Andy. And, and we enjoy uh, we enjoy working together. Um, and it's a it's a true family business. You know, we have my two oldest kids are in law school right now. And maybe one of my brother's kids will be. But, you know, the plan is to keep this going. Great. Great. And so, Brian, tell me a little bit about how you and your brother uh, heard about Canisius High School and how you found yourself, you know, at CHS. Yeah. Um, so. Actually, our grandfather went to Canisius High School. He graduated, I want to say, like in 1945, right. 44 region. Um, as a matter of fact, he, in the alumni hall, his picture's up on one of the composites from the graduating class. And when I used to go to school at Canisius, I sometimes popped in and would show my friends, this is my grandfather. Uh, and, other, and sometimes my friends would say, oh, my grandfather's over here. So that was kind of cool. Um, that was my mom's dad. So my dad went, uh, grew up in the Bronx in New York City. He went to a Jesuit high school, Xavier University, or Xavier High School. He then came to Buffalo for Canisius College, another Jesuit school, sure. and stayed here after college and, and remained here and met my mom. Um, so we had it kind of in our blood a little bit. Sure. But I will say that at least from my perspective, maybe Brad too, when I visited high schools and great in middle school when I was at St. Greg's, um, you know, just walking through those blue doors for the first time and seeing the school and the atmosphere and really some of the older kids who kind of showed us around and shadowed, it just felt like a great place to be. It felt like home almost. And yes, I visited St. Joe's, but right away I thought to myself, yeah, I'm definitely coming here. Uh, I mean, my brother was already there. He was a couple of years ahead of me and yeah. I knew some of his friends, but still I had my own experience and it just, it felt like the right place. That's great. Yeah. And, and so as far as like some of the key faculty uh, influences that you guys had, talk a little bit about who were your favorites, Brad, we could start with you. Just who are the people that, you know, you really gravitated towards at Canisius high school, you guys were, you know, in the same cohort. So you probably had a lot of the same teachers and also yeah. a little bit about what kind of activities you were involved in while you were in school here. So my brother and I, uh, you know, grew up playing a lot of sports. Um, so we were both active uh, on the sports teams at Canisius. Uh, I swam for four years, played golf for four years. My brother played hockey. Um, we did a lot of different, you know, other, tons of activities at Canisius. That's one thing we loved is there was so much, so much to do. Uh, I enjoyed, and he did too, being a part of those sports teams. It was uh, just made lifelong friends to this day. In fact, right. we were talking um, recently about what it, we we were a good golf team. We won, you know, the All Catholics every year. And um, I remember Father Bellotti was our coach, so he was the president of the school at the time, uh, and he was a great guy. 
but we were just talking recently about how we're all still friends and it's so funny and and we and every now and then when I was in the school when my son was there because we both have boys that went to Canisius as well so I kind of look at we're like a legacy family if you know what sure. I mean um and I used to tell my son I'd be like hey look, look at those trophies in the case a bunch of them have your dad's name on them he used to laugh and take pictures send pictures to me and stuff and we'd laugh about it uh but we're very proud of the activities we did but it's some of the I mean I, I still laugh about Father McIntyre who used to yell at me and my friends about not having our top button all the way buttoned up you know choking your neck with the tie and the whole deal I used to get in trouble in English class when when we'd walk in and he would just look at everybody we'd all be scrambling to fix our ties and everything but he was he was a wonderful influence on me uh Mr. Casciano was my uh I still remember him because I, I just he's just such a cool guy um he was my uh, homeroom teacher and there's a whole so many of them um Mr. Van Dyke who at the time was a wasn't an ordained Jesuit, but he was studying. Great guy. Just a lot of, lot of wonderful people. Just a w wonderful family atmosphere. Brian, how about you? Yeah, yeah, I remember Mr. Casciano. The best about Mr. Casciano was he also worked the border <laughs> at the Customs and Border Patrol. So there in, in the summer, people, right? There was a couple of guys, Bob O'Connor, like a couple of guys did yeah, that. Mr. O'Connor. So we would, so all the kids, we'd be going to Canada, go to the beach for the day or whatever. And He'd be the one telling us to be safe and get home safe. And it was, uh, it was crazy. Um, yeah. You know, I, I remember the English department because I just remember the English and math were so strong at Canisius and definitely prepared me for law school. Um, the English department, Mr. Durkin, Mr. Finucane, some of my favorite teachers, um, they were just excellent at, at how they, you know, were able to teach English and a difficult subject. Um I mean, Mr. You know, guys like Mr. Palisano, uh, Father Zanoni, who I still I love. Father Zanoni, I had him twice for religion. He, yep. I drove him crazy, but I still see him at the alumni events after the golf tournament. He yep. still comes out and he remembers me. Um, and um, you know, just really like Brad said, a lot, so many of the teachers, so yep. many, so many had influences on me. Um, I also did, uh, besides hockey, I also was in the plays and Brad was in the plays too. It was a good way to meet girls. Um, it was, you know, girls from Narden, girls right. from uh, Buff Sam would come in and those were always enjoyable. So it wasn't just sports too. I mean, we got into plays and some of the, you know, I don't know if it was musicals because we had Father Nauman. It was all the old plays, English plays, but, you know, it was just, it was great to be involved in different ways. Right. And so, Brian, let's stay with you for a little bit. You mentioned just a second ago your law school and stuff like that. Talk a little bit about your journey after Canisius High School, you know, how you found your career path. And I know it's a family business, so maybe it wasn't that hard, but talk about sort of how you came to your professional life. And then, Brad, we'll, we'll get a little bit more feedback from you on the same question. Yeah. So after Canisius, I went to SUNY Geneseo, uh, which isn't far away, an hour away. And actually, two of my one of my two of my great friends from Canisius High School also went to Geneseo, which was helpful. Knowing a few guys, we ended up joining the same fraternity. Right. Um, so Geneseo, I was actually studying biology. Um, I went in. My mom kind of thought I would be good at pre med. I you know, so I started off by biology. And after one year, to be quite honest, I just just knew it wasn't for me. Right. Um, like I said, the English and math were really my basis at Canisius. So I started switching over to political science and I had a minor in history. I love to read. I love to write, which then inevitably kind of brought me towards law school. Um, I definitely didn't always think I'd be a lawyer. I didn't, wasn't sure I was going to follow my dad's footsteps or my brother's, but I, it kind of drew me there because of my personality and because of really my talents and what I learned in high school. So after Geneseo, I went right on to law school in Boston. Uh, I stayed in Boston, like Brad said earlier, he did uh, for a couple of years after law school. We're both admitted in Massachusetts. So we have dual um, admissions, New York and Massachusetts, which actually has helped. I've had cases come out of Massachusetts. It's not that, you know, it's a neighboring state. Sure. Um, and then after law school and after work, like my brother said, very similar. My, my brother's the one who called me. And he, he gave me the same speech. He said, things are going great here. Dad and I are really doing great, but we could use more help. Why not be family? Right. And at the, I thought the same thing. You know what? It's time to come home, raise a family at home. 
I have kids, you know, locally who ended up going to Canisius, two of my boys, one daughter went to Narden. So it just was a nice progression. That's great. And, and Brad, you, if I'm not mistaken, you were also had a history uh, background in college. Yeah. Right? Tell us a little bit about yeah. your journey. Well, I, I stayed a Jesuit. I stayed a crusader. Uh, I went to Holy Cross after Canisius. Nice. Didn't have enough of it. Needed more. No, it was great. <laughs> I, became, uh, I, became, sure. I became a knight. I was a Geneseo <laughs> blue knight. He nice. was a crusader. Stayed a crusader. It was very easy for me to remember some of my right. passwords. You know what I mean? Uh, but yeah, it was it was a wonderful experience. Jesuit at Holy Cross. Loved every second. Um, and, you know, similar similar path. Went to law school in Connecticut. Um, like I, I said earlier, my dad ended up wanting us to come back and, and work in the family business, which was which was a, obviously a wonderful decision we both made. Um, and just, uh, you know, Canisius, something about it, just the, the, the brotherhood, the camaraderie, the, the way we were taught, the Jesuit tradition just helped me fashion everything for my whole life. Yeah, and that's, so, and that's like, so my follow-up question was going to be, and you started right there just talking about it a little bit, is just what did you take from that Canisius, your Canisius experience that helped you guys in college and then professionally. And so Brad, just talk a little bit more about yeah. that. Like some of those things. Um, Cause these are, these are really the nuggets yeah. that I think are, are the most interesting for not only our alums, but our, our kids that are out of college and just into the world, you know? Absolutely. You know, Canisius has that mission statement and that mantra and that belief of helping others. Sure. And that's what we do on a daily basis, not a, every other day or every, on a daily basis, our mission is to help people, whether it be legally, whether it be in their in their own lives in the community. That's the one thing that I've always carried with me from my four years at Canisius High School, where they, they, they don't force you into believing it, they show you the value of it. Mm -hmm. And that's the one thing I think we both would wanna pass on. And I know our kids, his two boys, my one son, felt the same way they mm. feel this in you know it's a pride and it's an enjoying helping other people and with that as the backdrop it's helped us help me in my career commitment to the work dedication to the work respect for the people i deal with whether it be my own employees the people that brian and i employ or the people we work with and of course our clients all of that i could relate back to what we were taught and shown at Canisius High School, without a doubt. Brian, anything to add to that? Yeah, you know, I, I think I think the young men and young guys coming out of Canisius could appreciate this analogy. It's almost like when you talk about, like, let's say Josh Allen or another great quarterback. The, the announcers say it's hard to put a word on it. He's just got it. You know, yeah. like some quarterbacks, some athletes just got it. So it's hard to describe sometimes in words, but it's kind of like that feeling when you – come out of Canisius and all those years that you went there and you look back years later, there was just something about it. Um, it's hard to describe. It's hard to put in words. It's different for other people. It's different mm -hmm. for other guys. Our kids are all three of our boys who graduated Canisius also have those same feelings. And right now they're just in college, but it, there was something about it or his is in law school, but there's something about the way it was whether it's the fun times at the lunchroom and getting in trouble, whether it's the kind of sometimes the ridiculous, um, me, um, what do they call them? Assemblies in the gym. I mean, we saw some weird assemblies like Christian <laughs> rock bands. We, we saw weightlifters come in and we just had such a good time sure. and enjoyed it. And the teachers like, were like, Oh, they really enjoyed this. Yeah, because there was just something about it. So and or just walking the halls, but then of course the education too, and then the sports. Yeah, and then the teachers, and then the alumni, and your fellow alumni. It's just there's just something about it. Well, that shared experience, I think, you know, it's it's what binds us together. There's a camaraderie and a brotherhood to it all. And some of us would say we survived Canisius. Some of us would, you know, would say we thrived at Canisius. But there is that shared experience that that we can all speak to, and I think that binds us and. As somebody that has lived, um, you know, in Washington D.C. in New York City, you go out into the wider world, and there that tie that binds us all. Uh, you know, Canisius is a national brand. You go everywhere you go, there is a group of alumni in those cities that are that are willing to share stories with you and help you out. And I think I think some of it, if I could 
put a, you know, a name to it. I think it really is that it's that shared, shared experience, but Brian, just, you know, last question here, um, thinking about, you know, if you could give some advice to your uh, younger self right now, we're, we're, we're all the same age right now, or all you the 50 or right up, right around there. Um, you looking back in time, you know, you guys have had now very successful professional careers. You've gone through college, you've gone through high school. If you could give yourself some, your younger self, some advice, um, and, and remember, we have young alums that are going to be looking at this and uh, kids that are here now. What were some, some advice you could give yourself as you, uh, to make your way in the world now? We'll start with you, Brian. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. Um, first of all, I would say, looking at my younger self, don't pretend you know it all. Mm. Listen to your elders, your parents, your teachers, if you're in college, your professors. As a young man, you think you know it all. You have the answer. I'm right. And I know what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. And the bottom line is you sure as heck don't. Um, there's a lot to learn. And and we're still learning. You know, I'm 51 years old. I learn from clients when they tell me certain stories. I learn from judge or other lawyers, my dad, uh, my mom. So always be open to that, that you don't know it all. And sometimes it's not needing help. It's, it's not weakness. It's just Listen, and you can learn from a lot of people, not just older than you, but even your peers, number one. Okay. Number two, for the kids, the young guys today, you know, I see my kids, my kids the way they are with their phones and the and the Instagrams and Facebook. It makes me nervous that people don't interact with one another more. Mm. You know, high school, you walk around and you have to interact. But when you go out to the real world, you don't, sometimes people get lost in their own little world of, well, I can just do it on my computer or I can work from home. I say interact with people. You know, we're human beings. We're meant to interact with one another. That goes to the learning and, and what we can get from each other in our relationships. But just, you know, be involved, especially in college. You know, just don't go back to your room. Don't go back to the, you know, study room. You know, be involved. Do different things that you may not think because you don't know who you're going to meet. And you don't know what might actually drive you in the future. You just don't know. Mm -hmm. um, and like you said about the alumni of Canisius, I think it's super important to stay close to Canisius right. in, in one way or another. Um, it is unbelievable. Like you said, not only it's a national treasure that, you know, other cities and people from other cities and companies and everywhere else know about Canisius, but the relationships that you build, you don't know where they might take you um, in business later in jobs, in relationships. Mm -hmm. There's never a time, if if my kids, when they get into their graduate schools and stuff, if that's where they're going to go, if they wanted a job or an internship or something, the first place I'm reaching out to are people from Canisius sure. and have them connect with them because they're business owners, they're company owners, they're high ups in various businesses, they're self-employed business people. You know, they love Canisius grads. They love them. And they know they're well-educated. They know they're respectful. They know they're good men, young men. So keep in touch with Canisius, whether it's a golf, the golf tournament, whether it's going to Canisius football, St. Joe's games, even after you graduate, stay involved because I'm telling you, it the the net is wide. It's great, great advice. Great advice. Brad, any, anything you wanted to add to that as far as uh, some advice? I echo everything my brother said. I, I would like to add one thing. Um, there's a lot of people, especially young people, that seem to struggle with stress and, and feeling overwhelmed and anxiety and things in today's world. And the advice I offer is don't be afraid to get involved. Don't be afraid to, even if you feel like you're coming out of your comfort zone a little bit, you'd be so shocked and, in my opinion, so happy at being able to be a part of something different, joining a club being part of a, an organization, uh, doing something different, um, establishing your own type of group based on an interest you may have. My advice would be don't be afraid. And it kind of dovetails with my, what my brother said about interacting as human beings. Sure. Instead of just emailing and texting and hiding behind those things in a sense, go out and join something. Go out and do something. Don't be afraid. Interact with other individuals. You'd be surprised how wonderful those things can do and how wonderful those relationships can be. 
And I see a lot of that in the younger people. They're all afraid a little bit and tentative. It's okay. But every now and then try something different. You'd be so shocked. Well, it goes hand in hand with, you know, our, our principal, Tom Coppola, for, graduate of the class of 01. He yeah. starts every class year and your boys heard it, right? Because they were here recently. He yeah. starts every year by telling the boys, jump in with two feet. You'll, you'll never regret it, right? Like stretch yourself, get involved in things that get out of your comfort zone. Growth only comes through strain. And, and that's a great lesson to start that you guys took to heart at an early age. And then it takes you through your entire life. So Thank really you does. both so much for, for joining me today. I really learned a lot and enjoyed it. And I'm looking forward to seeing you guys at an event coming up. We got jug night coming up in January and a couple other yep. stuff. So thank yep. you for, for spending your time, sharing your wisdom uh, and the information that you did. And I uh, look forward to seeing you on campus soon. All right, Andy. Thank you, Andy. We appreciate it. And to all the students and all the alumni watching, good luck. And we're here if you ever need us. Go Crusaders. Go Crusaders. Crusaders. Thanks, Andy. It was a pleasure. You guys. Take care.